Он живет в Австралии, а работает по всему миру. Вчера он первый раз приехал в Россию. Автор более 200 статей об интернете и трех книг бестселлеров. Основатель консалтинговой компании Step2. Совладелец интернет Оскара, который мечтает получить каждый. Дамы и господа, Джеймс Робертс. Hello. Thank you so much uh, for giving me the opportunity to be here. Uh, I really do think that these conferences that are run by people who are passionate about the space, who care about the community, uh, I think these types of conferences are so very important. And what is brilliant is to see them popping up around the world. And I can say I was here at the beginning, so the <laughs> honour is mine. So. Uh, what am I talking about today? So I'm talking about a journey that I see that we are all on at the moment, starting from the, the fundamentals of, of where we are today to where the future could and should be going forward. But I'm actually going to start by talking about Anna. So Anna uh, works for one of our clients. Uh, she is out in the field. She is helping kids with disabilities, well, um, adults with disabilities. She's doing a very, very important and challenging job. It's not an easy job, but she loves what she does. Now, she is provided by the company a mobile phone. And on that phone, she gets email. And that's about it. She does not have access to the intranet. She cannot apply for leave online. If she wants to change her work roster, her work shifts, she has to ring up someone and ask. If she wants to do any processes, it's on paper. If she wants support for the knowledge that she needs to do her job, then she has to go back into the office to access a computer at a desk. Now, I think this is not good enough. I think for people like Anna, we should be doing better. That for people who are certainly away from their desks, we must support them as well as what we get in an office. And that's what I'm going to be really talking about today. I'm going to be coming back to Anna, the person who needs help. Because what we see and what has already been talked about is that there is a big transformation underway. It's been happening out in the customer space for a long time now. And now we're actually starting to see real digital transformation happen within organisations. And this is great. So we are getting more tools, we're getting more capabilities to help us to work better. But it's not just about the box of presents that we get at Christmas time. It's about how do we deliver these capabilities? How do we deliver this functionality so that it is easy, so that it is productive, so that it is simple for Anna? And that is the challenge that we are facing today. So hello, yes, I'm James. Uh, so I've been in this space for more than 20 years. Um, and what I love about this and the reason why I am still here today is that I get a chance to work with people who are equally passionate about delivering great solutions to staff. Uh, and that has been uh, my focus for the whole time. Uh, and over the years, uh, I've written some books uh, and some articles and some white papers. Uh, the books are great. <laughs> the reason why they're great is that they are so cheerful. Their covers are so bright and happy that when you have them in your desk or in your office, it makes your office look happier. And that is why the books are great. Uh, I am also, in my part time, uh, when I'm not at work, I'm a beekeeper. Uh, that is me standing on my roof within our house in the middle of Sydney. 
So I have to climb a ladder to get to these beehives. Um, but I also have a property uh, down two hours south of Sydney, uh, a farm in which I have more bees and I have trees, uh, and it did not burn down. In the bushfires, it got very close. Within five kilometres of the farm, the fire rushed past, but now it has rained and so we're okay. So uh, you can ask me in the, after the talk about intranets or about beekeeping. It is your choice. So, okay, so I'm going to be talking about a journey in three phases. So I'm going to be starting to talk first about modern intranets and what that means and what they can and should do. I'm then going to be talking about the digital workplace, the wider set of tools within the organisation. Uh, and ultimately, we're well, going to be talking about digital employee experience, as Alana mentioned. And this is really the very new concept that I really want to share with you, because I think you are going to be doing great things in this space. But let's start at the beginning. Let's start at intranets. And the first thing I want to say is, I'm not afraid to use the intranet word. It is not sexy. It is, not a, it, it is not a word that makes people excited. But it is important. We still have them and we still need them and we still need to be delivering better intranets. And certainly what I see is that modern intranets are even more important than before. Now they still need to do fundamental things to contain content. To, to spread news, and so those services that it must provide. But we also see that the intranet should be the enterprise front door. So the front door to the rest of the tools within the organisation, so that staff have only one place they need to go, not where everything will be there, but they, they can then jump off, they can navigate to all of the tools that are provided. That front door must also give visibility to what is happening within the organisation. Because if we have a collaboration tool there and a collaboration tool over there and several others over here and here are my business systems of various sorts, then these are all locked away. These are all invisible to the wider staff population. And so we need to make activity in terms of discussion, in terms of collaboration, in terms of business process, we need to make that visible. And that, is, again, is where the intranet can play a role. And for a long time, uh, I've talked about the five purposes of intranets. So let me talk these through. So the first is the intranet as a home for content. And so this might be corporate content, HR content or IT content, but it might be also business content out within the corners of the organisation. And we are doing great at this. That is to say, the intranet contains a lot of content. A lot of content. And actually it proves to be quite difficult to structure that content so that people can find it. And it's quite hard to get people to keep it up to date. So maybe we've done half the job. Maybe we have brought the content together, but yet there is still work to be done about how to deliver that better to staff. But this has certainly always been the traditional role of intranets. And then alongside that, and the second theme for the conference and what tomorrow will be about, is the intranet as an internal communications channel. So this is intranet news that hopefully reaches every staff person, regardless of whether they're in an office or whether they're out in the field using their phone. We then talk about the intranet as uh, uh, a channel for internal culture within the organisation. And this might be about celebrating the organisation, celebrating what it is good at, 
celebrating what it is strong at, but also celebrating the staff that are within it. So the great people that work for an organisation. But it might also be about culture change. So if the organisation is changing, then the intranet can help support that change. Now, the intranet itself cannot change culture, but it absolutely can support culture change. And if nothing else, the intranet should not be ugly. So, OK, here's a question to the audience. What message does an ugly intranet send to staff? What message does it? What does it make staff think? But don't care about you. Great. It's okay to do a sloppy job. It's okay to do a sloppy job. I like that. We don't care. Maybe you don't need to either. Yes. Anything else? So yeah, we don't respect you, right? So this is the message that an old, ugly intranet says, which is we don't care about you, we are not interested in being efficient and successful, you know, whatever. So that's not good enough. Uh, now the big area, oops, I clicked too far ahead, um, that everyone is talking about these days is collaboration. And there are a lot of tools. Now, the rest of the world is using Office 365. You are using different tools. But it is the same opportunity. It is the same ability to connect people together, to work together better than we have in the past. But it's also the same challenge. How do we do this well? How do we help people be successful at collaborating? How do we use collaboration in a way that is effective for the business and isn't just everyone talking in every different direction. And this is something that we are all still learning about at the moment. And the last area is activity. So this is intranet as a place for doing things, not just for reading. And so, for example, many intranets have online forms. And in Australia, sad to say, that in many cases means online forms is a PDF. It is a PDF of the form. I'm sure you're much better here. But in Australia, it is a PDF of the form that I download, I print, I fill in by hand, I then send by internal post, or I take a photo and I upload and then someone processes it. Uh, I mean, I hear on the web they have forms with a submit button and everything. And so this is still something the intranet in many places still has to catch up on, which is proper online processes. And I think actually from what I've seen from the award winners, over the years in the awards from Russia, actually, you are much better at that here than in many other countries, including Australia. Now, so if this is the five purposes, then you can think of this um, as a set of sliders, like on a, uh, on a stereo, which says, how strong are we across each of these purposes? And there is no one right answer. So it might be that uh, you are looking to be very strong on collaboration. So you want to make collaboration the top thing. And you, in fact, have a social intranet in which every part of the intranet is collaborative. And you have a really big focus on collaborative culture, but maybe you don't care so much about content and, and old internal communications. That's OK. Or maybe you have staff who work in a factory or out in a power station. And maybe, actually, the biggest thing for you is content. And this is not corporate content. This is content about how to run the power station. And you have communications, which is giving updates on changes to the operation of the power station. But culture and collaboration happens 
face to face in the factory and not online. So it is still happening, but maybe in this case it is not the intranet's job to support it. Both of these answers are right, but maybe for different types of organisations. And what could be really useful is in your organisation to say, well, where are we today across each of these five purposes and where do we want to be? as an organisation within maybe one year or two years. And I would say several things. First off, you can't push all of these to the top. Right? There is a lot of work involved in this. And you shouldn't try to do all of them at once. So maybe you will focus on one or two aspects now, and then you will then follow on with some of the others. And so this is a very simple model. Now, I've been talking about this for maybe 10 years, um, but we use it all the time when we're doing work with clients because it just helps to pull things together to say, what are we trying to achieve here? You know, and so what does a modern intranet look like? Well, Alana has already showed some examples. Uh, and this is another. So this is from 3M, obviously the maker of the post-it notes you have on your tables. And this is, a, I guess, a classic uh, intranet homepage with a mix of functionality, news and events and links to tools. Uh, and what's nice in on this intranet um, is that it shows you know, in a flyout of what collaboration spaces you're using, what documents you've accessed, so that it's more than just content and communications. Uh, and, you know, it is a rich delivery of intranet news, and this is the, the news centre with the ability to filter news with videos and all of this stuff. And so this is, I guess, a, a typical modern intranet. Right, and we're going to see some great modern intranets at the awards tonight. Right, and there is a lot of good, important work to do in this space. Um, right, and I will highlight that we've, you know, we've already given awards to some lovely Russian intranets, and I mean lovely, how beautiful are they? Certainly not what I was expecting. Hands up all those that have won a step to award. I'm looking at you, Tanya. There you go, great, great job. So, look, Russia is already doing great. I'm expecting to have more winners this year. In fact, I'm expecting soon to have more Russian winners than Australian winners which is a bit embarrassing for me, great for you. So, but okay, so if we talk about the digital workplace, because it is not just about the internet, there are many different tools. And so I can talk about the digital workplace being the sum total of all the systems, tools, and digital platforms within the organisation. But let me check. Hands up all those that have a digital workplace today within their organisation. Yeah, OK, that didn't work. So let me, let me try that again. Hands up all those that have a digital workplace in their organisation today. Oh, no, that's getting worse. Now, let me, let me try this a different way. Everyone put your hand up. Come on. <laughs> Everyone. Right? You have a digital workplace now. You, everyone does. You have had a digital workplace since email. You just don't have a very good one. <laughs> right? And that's the problem. So the digital workplace is not a thing. It is not a product. It is not a tool. It is not a platform. It is all of these things come together. And the important and useful thing is to say, well, what does a great digital workplace look like? And so then we start to talk about that a great digital workplace should be simple. Seamless, easy, productive, that helps people do work. And this, this is still some way off. And this is where at the moment there is a lot of work. Because what we are doing in our organisations today is we are adding tools. We are adding tools. Here's an extra collaboration tool. Here is an extra business system. Here is an extra process we are adding. We're not taking away. 
And so our organisations are getting more complex every single day. Now more powerful in what people can do, but by default harder. Because now there's so many more tools that people could or should be using. And so this is where we need to be thinking about how do we bring all of this stuff together. One of the earliest examples that I, that I think showed this very clearly is from Swisscom in Switzerland. And so this is their, their intranet homepage from a few years back. I done a lot of different types of news. Lots of news, updates in the network, there's blogs, uh, which Alana talked about in the survey, but in various other corporate news. So this looks very nice, but not unusual. But interestingly, they have several home pages. And this is the second home page. And so in this one, this is the work home page. Now I'll highlight it's in Swiss German, which I don't speak, Ernst does, I'm sure, a little. Um, but let me try and translate as, as we go through this. So this is, um, this is quick links, schnell Zugriff, schnell quick links. Right? And these are, are, are tailored for the person. This is ask the brain. This is an idea system. Uh, this is updates in the network, so this is an activity stream. As we go down, here are my collaboration spaces, here are my documents, um, all the way down to here is my cost codes, so this is how much I'm spending. And look, the most important thing that people want to know in a European company so what is the most important thing that everyone wants to know about what is happening today? Oh, money, yeah, not quite actually, close though. This is the cafeteria menu. <laughs> oh. Now what's nice about this, right, so you can see how this is bringing together a lot of different tools. And what's nice is the model behind it. So it says, that actually this is custom built. This is a layer on top that presents a simple experience and then sitting underneath this is SharePoint, is SAP, is different collaboration tools and so underneath this is multiple tools of which information is pulled out of. They don't get to present directly, they do not get any pixels on the screen. So the home page is designed to be really simple, built on top of the other tools. And this is starting to be that thinking about what does a digital workplace look like within the organisation. But let's talk about then the, the, I guess, the newest concept, digital employee experience. Uh, and this is defined even more broadly within the organisation. And it says digital employee experience is the sum total of all of the interactions within an organisation. And it comes from customer experience, so CX. And so I'm sure in Russia, like in every other part of the world now, organisations understand customer experience. Right? If you are a bank, then you care a lot about customer experience. So as a bank, you started by redesigning your website so that it's easier for people, but that's not enough. So you, you delivered new mobile solutions to customers to deliver a better experience. And in fact, you redesigned the branch so that the physical space the customer goes into is better. And then you even delivered entirely new products, all designed to, to deliver a better customer experience. But now we're starting to say, well, wait a second, if we care about customer experience, the interactions between the organisation and, and people out there, 
Well, shouldn't we care about employee experience? The experience of the people behind the scenes that are delivering these services. Why have we not thought about them before? And so this is where organisations, I think in early days, which I'll show you, which are starting to say maybe we should really care about the experience we deliver to our employees. And this is really exciting. And what we see is, is that this fits together like this. So if you've got the intranet, well, that is a thing. That is a product. That is a, 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 a digital service. But it is only one of the services that is provided as part of the digital workplace. So there are other applications and sites and services. But what we're now starting to say is, well, that's nice, but maybe we should take a perspective from the human. What is the human perspective on all of this? How are we delivering it to the person? Uh, and this is where we're starting to pull this together. And this is the most strategic view. Because, let me, let, let me describe a scenario for you. So in your organisation, the CEO, so the top leader, um, she is presenting to all staff, right? And she is standing, you know, behind the lectern, and she's talking about the year, and she's talking about the organisation strategy. Right, so this is pretty typical, right? And so she's standing there, and she's talking about the priorities of the organisation that she sees as the CEO. And she's talking about the importance of the intranet, and how this is a strategic focus to deliver a better UX for the intranet and better content and the way it is managed. No? No. No, maybe not. No, no. Okay, so that's not right. But okay. No, so let's try this again. So, so she is standing at the lectern and she's talking about the digital workplace. And she's talking about the rollout of new collaboration tools across the organisation that is going to transform the way we talk to each other with the ability to do blogs and, and ideation. No, Alana's still not convinced, right? So, so no, right? No. Right, but can you see this? Can you see the CEO standing there saying, we really care about customers. We've worked very hard to deliver great services to our customers, but we realise that we need to help our staff deliver those services better, and we need to help our staff to feel better connected and engaged and productive within our workplace. And this is what one of the things that we are going to be focusing on in the year ahead. Oh, Alana says, yes. <laughs> yes, well, so this is it. So maybe this is the strategic concept that we can take to our senior leaders that they care about. There's something that our senior leaders can be passionate about, and passion is important, much more than intranets, sad to say. Maybe she doesn't care. Maybe she doesn't care about Office 365. But hopefully she cares about this. And in terms of, of, of what is being delivered, well, this is still new. So we have just run our survey on digital employee experience, and the results come out next week. So you get to see a sneak preview ahead of the whole rest of the world. You are the first. Oof. Uh, and so, look, this year, 16%, um, only 16% of organisations have a definition for digital employee experience. And this is an improvement. Last year it was 13%. So we are getting there, but still, DEX, digital employee experience, is still clearly very new. What is encouraging uh, is that a lot of, of, of 
Uh, respondents within the survey have said the digital employee experience is extremely or very important to their organisation. So that is very encouraging and that is up from 36% last year. What is a little bit of a concern is that a lot of people said that digital employee experience is only somewhat important. Right, and that's because there's a lot of other things happening within organisations, a lot of other priorities. So there is still more work for us to do. What is also interesting that beyond the slides, which you will see in the survey next week, uh, is that um, there is a good and increasing level of readiness within organisations and that actually who is driving DEX, often not top down. Often DEX is being driven bottom up by staff like us and by business units who have a need. And so that's not a bad thing. I think that it should be perhaps a lot driven from the bottom up. And I've already talked about this, right? So this is the very simple equation. You cannot, to deliver great CX, you must deliver great employee experience. Uh, and obviously, where the digital bit. There are other components of employee experience. There is the physical component, and there is the cultural component. But obviously, you know, this is enough for me, right? There is a lot of work to do in the digital space, and so this is obviously the focus of a, of a conference like this. And in terms of some great examples, so Elena has, has touched on some of these already. Uh, so a few years back, we gave our Platinum Award, our, our top Oscar, as, it, as Alana says, um, to Liberty Mutual, um, not for their intranet, uh, but for their, their digital assistant that you can access in many ways, including on the intranet. And here is all of the details for me. Here is my HR details. Here are my team details. Here are my finance details. And actually, I can go through and complete tasks without ever having to go into many systems. And so that surfacing of all of the activities into a better employee experience is incredibly powerful. And they've provided things like a, a chatbot, which they're building out as another experience for people to use in order to get answers to their questions and get help with their processes. And look, it um, goes all the way out to doing approvals on your watch, which is, uh, in English you would say it is a gimmick. Not so useful, but quite cool to talk about. Look, it's on a watch. I don't know that I need to apply for leave on a watch, but, you know, why not? Uh, but if that was the solutions, I'm going to bring it back to Anna. Because as I said at the beginning, this whole story is about Anna and her needs. And we need to understand how she works and we need to help other people understand. And so one of the ways is by creating a, a persona. And so a persona that, that pulls together uh, descriptions on, on where she's working and what tools she's using, what activities she's doing in a day, what are her needs, but what are her points of pain. How many people here have created personas? It's a classic user experience technique. All right, great. So more of you should. <laughs> right, that's your job, right? Go back to the office, start creating personas. Because why are these important? Well, it turns out that Anna is a fake person because she's actually a persona, not a real person. But if we are delivering solutions, it reminds us that, well, how are we going to deliver this to Anna? Because certainly what we have seen uh, in terms of the digital employee experience, it's sad to say that many organisations have delivered brilliant solutions to people like us, sitting offices, 
But we are working with people in which organisations in which two thirds, right, two in every three people are out in the field, and what do they get? Nothing. Nothing. And I think that is disgraceful. I think that it is disrespectful for us not to deliver solutions to the whole workforce. Because that's what we should be doing in this modern day and age. That is the ethical approach to this. And so personas is a way of highlighting this. And it can go a step further. So this is quite complex at first glance, but actually it's very simple. This is for a, a, a similar but different persona. This is for Karen, who is a care worker, also going out in the field. And this is her day in the life. And it shows that she starts at home, she's in the car, she's visiting a client, she's back in the car, to a client, the car. Then she has to go into a branch. She has to go into an office to complete the paperwork, but they're very busy and they don't have enough time for her and she runs out of time and doesn't get everything done because she's back out with clients, four clients a day. And so then at home, she takes the paperwork home. And after the kids are fed and after they've gone to sleep, she then does the work that she could not fit into the rest of her day. And so we can see very clearly her points of pain. And better yet, what can we do? We can talk about a future day in the life. What should a day look like for Karen in maybe two years or three years or even four years? And this is how we use stories. Stories and storytelling as a way of communicating what digital employee experience is all about. Because it helps people to understand in the real world, this is what we should be providing, this is what we can be providing to people in the organisation. So, what have we talked about? So we talked about modern intranets and how across the five purposes we can deliver better intranets than people need. We've talked about digital employee experience um, and how we need that digital workplace and the tools that are part of that. And then we've talked about the digital employee experience. Now, what I will highlight is that right now our awards are open for entries. And if tonight you win an award, well, you should win another one, right? Because you can't have too many trophies that you can proudly put on the wall in your office and just point to them when people walk past. Uh, and even if you don't win an award tonight, there is still a chance of winning one globally. So if you have any questions about, about what you might want to enter, or if you need a little bit of extra time, then come and chat to me and we'll help you with that. And Alana, uh, who's one of the judges, she will also help you in terms of, of, of Russians winning awards. Uh, and what I'll say is this. I think this is a really exciting time because I, I think that, that, that you in the room, you are the ones who will be delivering great solutions. You are the ones who will be understanding what does digital employee experience mean in practice? And I will be learning from you over the next year or two about the extraordinary things that you can do within organisations. And what I would say is this, dream big, but deliver often. Thank you.